Okay, so we're gonna start. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning, afternoon, and everyone, uh, wherever you are. Uh, so I have met uh, some of you. My name is Nilofar. I'm a product manager at Sintica. And Sintica manages uh, the global sales and marketing efforts for innovative technologies, uh, which are used in the biomedical uh, research field. So today uh, we are uh, hosting with University of Southern California a seminar on uh, intravital microscopy, which is an interesting um, modality in our preclinical imaging portfolio. Uh, our speaker for today is Dr. Pilhan Kim, uh, an associate professor at Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, and also the CEO of IBM Technology, a manufacturer of high-end microscopy system in Dijon, Korea. Um, Dr. Uh, Pilhan Kim has received his uh, PhD degree in electrical engineering from Seoul National University uh, in Korea in 2005, and he has worked uh, as a postdoctoral uh, research fellow at Harvard Medical School for five years. Um, following that, uh, with a cross-disciplinary fellowship from the Human Frontier Science Program. Uh, in 2010, uh, he joined Korea's uh, Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, where he is currently holding a tenured associate professorship uh, at the School of uh, Nanoscience and Technology. Um, his research uh, focuses on cellular visualization of various preclinical models to investigate complex pathophysiology of human disease, which leads to the development of advanced ultra-fast laser scanning intravital microscopy systems. So in this seminar today, uh, Dr. Kim will talk about the state-of-art intravital two-photon and confocal microscopy systems, and we uh, will provide you with uh, real uh, examples of the IVM application in live imaging of various tissues and organ models uh, that will apply to your research. Um, at the end of the presentation, there will be an opportunity for live uh, Q&A, um, and please uh, Feel free to submit your question at the Q&A dialog box uh, throughout the presentation and after, and we will uh, answer uh, the questions. Uh, so I would be happy to hand it over to Dr. Kim, uh, please. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for joining this webinar today. So, uh, and thank you very much for the kind and very detailed you know, introduction of myself. Okay, let me just start. Uh, so, uh, as you already know, that uh, I have a CY. And then this is my uh, introduction slide. Just uh, my background is electrical engineering, as I just introduced. Okay, so uh, this is what I do in my lab and the, uh, at the KAIST, it's a Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. So, we developed the, I developed the intravital microscopy system in the lab and I try to you know, establish the real-time cellular level imaging technique for every different organ and tissues uh, in a live animal model. And then we have done a lot of imaging, uh, intraviral imaging analysis with the various human disease animal model. Okay, so uh, yeah, because, as, because my background is electrical engineering, Rather than using a custom and a commercial uh, microscope, uh, I make my own microscope in the lab. So this is the portal uh, of, uh, of the custom bill, very high speed, high power laser scanning, compocal and two button microscopy system uh, in my lab. So it's a full custom bill system. Oh, oh, sorry. So uh, this is a full custom build system. So uh, you know, depends depending on the application uh, of each specific organ, we can you know, easily change our design. And then this whole system is very much optimized for the in vivo imaging of uh, mostly for the mouse model. And then uh, we have we are using very high speed laser scanner to achieve video rate, real time imaging in various tissue and organ in the mouse model. So uh, with a 512 by 512 pixels per frame, 
we can, uh, our standard model can achieve 30 frames per second uh, imaging speed, and then it can be even faster up to 100 frames per second uh, if it's necessary. And then you can obtain the four color simultaneous imaging, both in compo core and two photon imaging mode. And then it can easily achieve a sub micrometer resolution uh, in vivo. And then using this customized, using this custom system, uh, we have been able to image almost organ, almost every organ and tissue uh, in live mouse model. And all this image is obtained from the live mouse, live, you know, anesthetized mouse model using, you know, you know, using various, you know, labeling approaches. So, uh, so all these images are from the live mouse model. So as you can see, we have imaged bone marrow, right, brain, brain tumor, sometimes retina with the customizations, and skin, hair follicle in the side of skin, or tumor, various tumor model. Actually, this is a colon cancer model and pancreas, spleen, stomach, and a uh, dry tract, like a small intestine, colon, a various adiposit tissue in, uh, in the prostate, while prostata in the pregnant mouse model, and then various lymph nodes, like the inguinal lymph node, and then a mesentery lymph node, and so on, and the memory tissue in female mouse model, or kidney, or kidney transplant, or scatter muscles, all around the body and the liver, heart, lung, or thyroid, and trachea. So we have, you know, tried to, you know, uh, make her, you know, small, all the accessory devices and apparatus to allow us to, in to you know, enable the, this high resolution imaging of all the different organ and tissues. So this is just a pure of the my publication list, actually. So uh, we have imaged almost every organ and tissue, as I just showed you in your in previous slides. So this system is very useful, and then it's well validated to be able to image all the different tissue and organs in a live mouse model. But it's too difficult for normal biologists to use. So well, that's why we try to you know make this uh, you know all in on you know single package system uh, as your uh, dual mode intravital compo core and two photon microscope. So you know everything is in, well almost everything is inside. So this is a uh, all in on packaging system. So uh, it has several in you know, advantages like easy installation, cost and space saving, and also high usability. For uh, for most of the biologist uh, biology people, and uh, yeah, and of course it's very much optimized system for in vivo several level intravital imaging of a live animal model, and then uh, uh, it and the inside of this box we integrate two photon uh, no uh, the high speed laser scanner for real time imaging, and also you know we integrate a very compact. 920 nanometer fixed wavelength femtosecond pulse laser module. Uh, sorry, inside the box. But the, you know, additionally, uh, this box has additional uh, optical ports to accommodate additional laser systems such as you know tunable femtosecond pulse laser system. Uh, it's huge uh, normally, so uh, we just placed this uh, tunable femtosecond pulse laser system right next to this box and then you know, use our you know, optical port in behind of this box. And then also this system is connect, can be connected with the uh, fiber coupled CW laser module for compact core imaging, whole channel compact core imaging. And then uh, inside this microscope, we you know, integrate you know, automatic uh, live tissue motion compensation functions. And then uh, we also providing a touchpad tablet for a live animal body temperature monitoring and maintenance. And then we also have implemented a comprehensive set of apparatus for various you know, internal organ imaging. So this is just a pure you know, example obtained from the live mouse model using this dual mode compo core and two photon intravital microscope system. Uh, so uh, called IBM CMS3. 
And then just using one single wavelength, you know, femtosecond laser and 920 nanometer. Uh, this laser, two photon, this pentasecond first laser module is actually inside its box. And then this is the data obtained from the skin of a live, you know, anesthetized the H2B GFP Lorja MTMG mouse. So in these images, the white color, the gray color is actually the uh, mostly collagen obtained by using second amic generation signal. And then green is actually nuclei. Uh, visualized by the H2B GFP. And then uh, this red color is mostly membrane TD tomato, uh, visualized by this Loja 26 MTMG. And then blue is actually blood vessel. It's visualized by the intravenously injected advanced blue. So basically, we are doing the presence and geography. So this is the you know, kind of a representative four color uh, imaging result. Uh, in two photon imaging mode. So you can, well, as you can see, so on the left side, this is the real GSTAC images obtained from the skin. So we just, you know, change in the uh, focus inside the skin. And then on the right side, this is the, uh, just a maximum intensity projection image of several this is single GSTAC images. So as you can see, we can nicely see the nucleus, nuclei, well, in the skin, and then this white color is the you know dermal collagen inside the dermis, and the red color is the uh, TD tomato signal of almost every uh, cells, and the blue color is of course the blood vessel. So you can see capillaries, and you can see, you can see this larger uh, vessel, a little deeper in the skin. And this is the imaging result obtained from the skeletal muscle. So uh, what you are seeking at is the uh, collagen in the passia. And then in here, you are looking at the sarcomere, myoplament, in the in the sink, uh, inside the myo, uh, myocyte, sorry. Well, same thing, collagen signal in the passia, you know, this uh, gray color is the sarcomere myofilament, green is the nucleus of the myocyte and the endocellular cells. And these are the large, uh, the, so in the middle, you can see the capillaries, uh, capillaries, uh, no, no, with the uh, myocyte, and then you can see that this larger vessel in the failure. And this is the another images obtained from the pancreas. Well, again, this is the live mouse model. So mouse is just make uh, uh, anesthetized. Mouse is anesthetized, and then the pancreas is uh, surgically exposed. And then this image was uh, obtained using this IBM CMS3 microscope. So you can, uh, well, same thing. So you can nicely see this uh, green nucleus, nuclei, and red color is the membrane and blood vessel. Okay, so all those very high resolution uh, images, live images of the live tissues and live organs in a live mouse model can be obtained by using our uh, intravital microscope system. So, well, this is the kind of the first slide I normally show. So as you may, maybe some of you already know, this intravital microscopy is a very unique and very powerful technique that can provide a very detailed live video in cellular level in live animal model. So compared to this tissue level X-ray, CT or MRI images, this intravital microscopy can, you know, provide this video in the live mouse model. So in this particular example, what you are looking at is the uh, movement of the neutrophil uh, inside the blood vessel, and uh, the red color is the neutrophil, and this green and this green color is the blood circulation, visualized by the intravenously injected epitis dextran. Uh, in the lung of a sepsis mouse model. So uh, what? Well, so this this video in the middle, what you are looking at is the, the you know neutrop formation of the neutropic cluster uh, inside the lung, uh, lung micro uh, circulations, and then this neutropic cluster in the middle, you know, it blocks the uh, this blood vessel, and then you know completely you know stop the blood circulation in this area of the lung of a sepsis mouse model. 
So this is how I do it. So uh, this is the one of the, our uh, device provided for the stabilized lung using in the live mouse model. So mouse is incubated in here. And then in the middle, you know, we expose the lung and then we, and then we place this uh, stabilized lung image window on the top of the lung. And then in here, we have a small hole so we can suck out the air from uh, this box, this chamber. And then by and then by building up the negative air pressure inside this chamber, we can you know, stabilize the motion of the lung. Uh, tap just the uh, part of the lung can be you know stabilized against this transparent cover glass. And in this setting, we can obtain this video from the live mouse model. Well, and the same approach can be used for the heart imaging as well. So uh, this is our you know, heart imaging chamber. So same principle again. So we suck out the air from the chamber uh, through this tube and they build up negative pressure uh, enough to you know, just uh, slow, you know, just uh, you know, stabilize the motion of the beating heart. And then we can obtain this real time video uh, from this anesthetized mouse model. Uh, well, in this particular example, we use a uh, live gem GFP transient mouse. So all of this green signal is neutrophil and there's some macrophages in the heart uh, in this, with, uh, obtained with this setting. And red color is actually a uh, blood vessel labeled by the CD31 antibody and also uh, some uh, red blood cell labeled by uh, DID. So you can nicely see this flowing red blood cell uh, in this vessel and the, at the surface of this heart. Uh, and this is another example. Uh, this is the real time, another real time video obtained from the uh, uh, cancer gene optimal mouse model. So in this particular example, we use the dorsal skin point chamber to image uh, this LSGFP cancer geography uh, in the uh, in the subcutaneous tissue here. So this is what we do. So we uh, do the surgery. We do the you know, surgical procedure to implant this dorsal skin point chamber, and then we inject this LSGFP uh, cancer cell or tumor cell in the middle of this imaging chamber, dorsal skin point chamber. And then we let the tumor grow for two weeks. And then we image the uh, mouse after two weeks. So uh, to label the endocellular cell, the vascular endocellular cell, we inject anti-CD31 antibody conjugate uh, with the lead flow four. And then we do the tail vein intermediate injection of this antibody conjugate. And this antibody conjugate circulate the full body and systemically, la systemically label all the endocellular cell. So all this red color is CD31 and then on the uh, vascular endocellular cell. And then we are, what we do is we also, you know, uh, you know, take uh, some blood out and then we press this DNA, we using DID, and then we inject it back to this mouse intravenously. So this red color, I don't know, the green color is actually this fluorescently labeled red blood cells. So we can nicely see the blood flow uh, in this tumor mode, in this tumor model, cancer tumor of the model, and blue is actually the tumor cell uh, expressing GFP. We just assume the choroid in blue. Well, so you can nicely see this blood flow in the middle, and then well, but the interesting thing is on this side, on this left side, in this vessel, you can see this IV flow is much more slow, much more sl sluggish actually. It's because this vessel is, you know, mechanically compressed by this proliferating uh, cancer cells uh, in here. So, okay, and then also for the pancreas imaging. So we sometimes we use this pancreas imaging window for long term repetitive, you know, pancreas imaging. So, so again, this is another model, another uh, example. So what we do was we implant this pancreas uh, imaging window to, and then we place the pancreas in the middle of this imaging window like this. 
and then we make a syngenic uh, orthotopic uh, pancreatic uh, tumor model by injecting this panko 2 GFP cancer cell to the pancreas. And then again, we let, the, let this pancreatic cancer cell to grow inside the pancreas. And then we can image the same pancreas again and again uh, at day seven to day 15. And this is a representative, representative you know, uh, you know, GS tag images obtained at day nine and day 14. And then you can see the growth of this panko 2 GFP expressed in pancreatic cancer cell and also change of the blood vessel labeled by the, the CD31 antibody conjugate. And then this is everyday images from day nine to day 14. So basically it's the same site was found at each, at each day after initializations. So uh, from day nine to day 10, day 11, you can see this, you know, increase, you know, this you know, very dramatic increase of this GFP expressing PANCO2, pancreatic cancer cell. And then if you look at this vessel, so from here to here, from day nine to day 10, well, there's not much change, but from day 10 to day 11, now you can see the dilation of a blood vessel and like here and here, and then at day from day 11 to day 12, this vessel get you know, more you know more chaotic like this. And then, and then in this part, this vessel was also dilated. But from day 12 to day 13, now we can you know, suddenly see the regression of the vessel in here, this side, like this, day 13 to day 14. So this part, you know, vessel became more you know scarce actually. So all these you know microscopic scale changes in the uh, live mouse model in the pancreas what can be you know imaged by using our uh, pancreatic image window so this is a very nice example to sh to show you what we can do by using our intravital imaging system okay this is a short summary so uh, compared to other imaging modality, this intravital microscopy is a very useful technique that can provide the microscopic scale uh, imaging for the analysis in 3D. So, uh, so like these images, this, uh, so like uh, this is the video obtained from the lung. In the middle, this is the uh, images, uh, the video obtained from the bone marrow after the bone marrow transplantation. On the right side, this is the uh, video obtained from the skin showing the uh, inflammatory response. So this is a very you know, nice example. These are the very nice example showing that uh, our intermittent microscopy system enables a dynamic you know, 3D imaging of various cellular level dynamics, such as cell trafficking, you know, cell to cell interactions, on or to cell to microenvironment interaction inside the live preclinical animal model in vivo. And also, you know, in addition to this processed cell, recently labeled cell, we can also image the drugs or you know, some other you know, therapeutic agent after process labeling. So for drug development, uh, intermittent microscopy also enables a direct imaging analysis of a drug delivery to the target tissue and cell. And also using uh, Francis biomarker, we can monitor the drug efficacy to validate the mode of action of the drugs in a live preclinical animal models. So on the left side, you know this. Well, uh, let me explain a little bit more later. But uh, this is what we obtained from the uh, liver after the injection of this uh, lead nanoparticle. So as you can see in this video, in the in real time video. This nanoparticle, you know, is flowing to the liver through the vessel, and then quickly accumulated in the certain part inside the liver sinusoid, as you can see in here in that color. And then, well, uh, sorry. And then in the in, in the middle, this is the uh, example to showing the uh, distribution of the nanoparticle uh, to get uh, delivered to the cancer cell through the vessel. Uh, yeah, so this is just, you know, another one very nice example to show about, to show the result on nanoparticle delivery imaging using our intervital microscope system.
So again, we use the size capable chamber, and then we make a uh, tumor model using triple negative breast cancer cells, MDA and B2 study one GFP. And then, uh, and then what we did was we inject the nanoparticles through the tail vein, and then we also label the uh, tumor vessel using CD study, anti CD study one antibody conjugate, uh, shown in blue here. And then this image is obtained obtained at two hour, six hour, and twenty four hours. So let me remove the cancer cell. So this is how it looks like. So from two hour at two hour, we don't see you know many nanoparticle, but at six hour, definitely this nanoparticle was significantly significantly increased. But it's still you know mostly inside the vessel or right or you know, or lying next to the vessel like this. And then at 24 hours, finally, we can see, on a, uh, again, finally, we can see the, you know, kind of a delivery of this lead nanoparticle outside the vessel, outside the tumor vessel, and then to the uh, to the tumor cancer cell, like this here, well, here, and then, and then also some here, and then here as well. So using this uh, setting, using this uh, dosage chamber, and then uh, our interpreter microscope system, well, we can monitor the nanoparticle delivery well, over the uh, over uh, several days, actually. Okay, so I showed you, you know, several examples of our interpreter imaging in different organs. So uh, let me a little bit more explain about the, uh, the advantage of our system. So again, it's an original single box package system. So uh, you can you can save the space, and then you can and then also you can save the cost as well. And then it has co-optimized the hardware and solution for the intravital imaging of a live animal model. So we are, we have ultra pass laser scanner inside that can achieve real time imaging. Uh, we decided to one hundred frames per second with the four color imagings. And then we have live tissue motion compensation functions. And then we have an integrated device for live animal maintenance and monitoring. And then all these functions, all these in the characteristics, you know, enable, you know, like uh, enable the us to image almost all every organ and tissue in a live mouse model. So uh, instead of a conventional fiber scanners. We use rotating polygon uh, polygon meter as our past axis scanners. So that's why we can enable, we can achieve this very high speed, like a maximum 100 frames per second. And then also this high speed, this real time imaging capability is very important to, to achieve you know, any more uh, live tissue motion compensation functions. So our approach is basically we do the real-time video rate imaging in the tissue like this. And then, well, from this real-time video data, we can do frame-by-frame -frame motion compensation to compensate tissue motion like this. So this is the compensated uh, images. So so this is the comparison with motion compensation and without motion compensation. So uh, you can definitely see why we need this uh, live tissue motion compensation function to achieve higher resolution imaging in live tissues. And then again, if you think about it, if your system is slow, then you will definitely end up in this blurred uh, you will definitely end up to this blurred images because uh, your imaging will be imaging speed, your imaging will be like uh, slow, and then it cannot deal with this uh, fast tissue motion uh, in live mouse model. So, this is another example. Actually, this is the, uh, the low data, low video data from the uh, kidney, actually. So, definitely, again, you can compare the result with motion compensation and without motion compensations. And this motion compensation, you know, function is pro automatic. So this is the uh, video capture of our software. So what you need to do is you just you know, activate the motion compensation function and then, you know, just act, press the uh, image acquisition button. 
then it generate it automatically generate these motion compensated images uh, from the real time video. And then we, you know, and then we also provide this uh, temperature monitoring and feedback heater control system. So here we we use this rectal probe to monitor the body core temperature, and then we have a feedback heating uh, feedback controller to control the temperature of this plate. So this plate has a you know, heating system inside it. So this, uh, the body temperature of this NSM mouse model is maintained using this heater and this rectal uh, body temperature monitoring sensors. And then we also provide additional uh, tissue temperature sensor, temperature indicator, uh, to indicate actually, to monitor the local temperature of the tissue during the imaging. And then, if and then, if necessary, we also provide by these glass heaters uh, like this to put on the uh, exposed tissue. Uh, and then, you know, uh, and then maybe some of you already seen it. So our microscope has a sliding door in front, and then once you open this sliding door, uh, we have this uh, X Y Z, you know, motorized stages. And then it has an additional sliding mechanism inside, so we can uh, take out the, uh, this stages like this, and then we can put the, this heating plate in the middle, like this, and then you know put it back under the uh, objective lens, and then we close the door, and then we can start the imaging. And then our system is light tight system. So you don't need you don't need the you know uh, dark room. So you don't need to turn up the, all the light in your uh, in your room. So that's another you know easy thing for you for two photon and compact core imaging. Okay, so you know with the compact core imaging mode, we can we have you know achieved this you know three D uh, image in various tissues. Like uh, so, this is another example. Uh, obtained from the inguinal adiposite tissue. So in this particular example, we imaged the adiponectin Cree crossed with the M2MG, uh, Roger 26 M2MG mouse model. So green is adipocyte, and the red color uh, is all the other cells, uh, mostly vessel, vascular endocellular cell. And this is 3D rendered, uh, 3D -rendered data uh, from this GSTEC images. So, uh, so you can see, you know, we can easily achieve, in the, as you can see in this 3D rendered video, we can easily achieve, you know, sub-micrometer resolution in live tissues. That's, you know, high enough to, to distinguish the single uh, individual uh, extracellular vesicle here, and also here and here. Uh, and this is another example uh, I published uh, uh, two years ago. So in this particular example, we use uh, one process, uh, present uh, agent that can label the lipid droplet inside the hepatocyte. So, so uh, it's called SF44. This is a processed agent that can be intravenously injected through the tail vein. And then it nicely, you know, label all the lipid droplets inside the hepatocyte in vivo in a live mouse model. And then in this setting, uh, by inducing the uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver uh, uh, with uh, MCD diet, it's a messiah and choline deficient diet. And then you can, you know, you can we can easily so compared to the normal diet, normal mouse model. Only, only after two days of this MCD diet, we can see the, you know, this very dramatic increase of the lipid droplet uh, in the liver of live mouse model. And then it, you know, it continuously increase with uh, this MCD diet, like 14 days and 21 days, you can now see this very large lipid droplet formations. So this two days, well, seven days, 14 and 21 days. And the two photon microscope, you know, compared to the compact core microscope, to this two photon microscope use uh, uh, two photon excitation to obtain the process signal. And then, in addition to process imaging, this two photon microscope is capable of label-free, nonlinear, uh, second-order generation imaging. 
And then it's particularly useful to image the collagen or microtubule or regular protein fibers in biological tissue of a live mouse model. So this is one example showing the fibrotic collagen in the liver of the liver fibrosis mouse model. So compared to the uh, two potent excitation process, this is second number generation is uh, uh, elastic system, elastic phenomena. So uh, you don't need you don't need the energies in this process, but uh, you know your wavelengths is basically doubled up. That's what uh, second number generation means. And then this second number generation process is very efficiently happen in collagen fiber bundle. So that's why we can see this strong second number generation signal in the collagen bundle. And it's, you know, as you can see in this example, it's very useful to visualize the fibrotic collagen in live mouse model. And uh, well, this is one schematics, uh, another result published last year. And uh, so in addition to the hepatic, hepatic lipid droplet, enabled by process agent SF44, using second amygdalation signal, we can visualize the collagen in the liver. Like this, uh, compared to normal mouse model. So, uh, again, this is the uh, live data obtained from the, obtained from the live and stage mouse model. So you can nicely see the this large repeated droplet and this uh, accumulation of this perisanusoidal collagen uh, in the liver of this liver fibrosis and steatosis model. And then, well, of course, this is two photon microscope. So, uh, we can obtain this uh, 3D data using GSTEC images. And this is another example. So in this example, we use Psi-1 YFP transgenic mouse. So, uh, so in this mouse, the peripheral nerve express uh, YFP. And then uh, this is actually dual mode imaging data. So uh, in green color, you are looking at the uh, neuromuscular junction in green. Uh, in, with the two photon process. And then in red color, you are looking at the uh, second, second harmonic generation signal from the uh, sarcomere myopilament in the myocyte and also uh, collagen in the uh, passia. And the blue is actually the uh, vessel and then it's obtained uh, in compocal imaging mode. So what it did was we first obtained the two photon process and second harmonic generation signal in two photon imaging mode. And then we switch to the compact imaging mode and then image the, this uh, uh, vessel with a sing uh, single photon excitation in compact imaging mode. And then uh, we also have this uh, uh, imaging software uh, to visualization of 2D data, 3D data, and also 4D data. So basically, this is time maps 3D GSTEC uh, images, 3D GSTEC data. And then well, we can make it uh, 3D, we can show it in 3D like this. Okay, from now on, I can, uh, I'd like to show how we image all different organs and tissues. So this is the preparation for the uh, ear skin imaging. And this is the very typical data we can obtain uh, with this setting. So well, this is five. Uh, this is uh, our data published in JCB five years ago. So uh, this is like a zero hour, three hour, six hour after this red color uh, protein, the KS injections. So we use a micro injector uh, to intradermally inject uh, this KS protein, and it quickly induced very this strong inflammatory response. Uh, of uh, neutral filament macrophages. And this is the preparation for the lymph node imaging, actually potential lymph node imaging. And then in the middle, uh, on the left side, what you're looking at is the extravagation of the T cell and B cell uh, from this vessel to the lymph node parenchyma. Okay, and then uh, this is the imaging of the bone marrow, the basically cranial bone marrow. So the cranial bone is very thin. So uh, just the incision of the skin was enough to, to uh, see the uh, bone marrow inside this cranial bone. Uh, so this is the image obtained at day one, three, and four after the transplantation of bone marrow cell. 
And then this is the uh, actually five hour time next video obtained at uh, day four. So all this, you know, small, this is, you know, very wide area tile, tiled images. And then all this small cluster, we can see this uh, preparation of the uh, bone, transplanted bone marrow cell and then, you know, migration of the bone marrow cell to certain, you know, niche area. And uh, this is the uh, preparation for the small intestine imaging. So small intestine was extraized, and then we exposed the lumen. And then this is our uh, real-time data, another real-time data showing the uh, movement of the uh, flakia, it's an lymphatic endothelial cells, and then also radical is the press sense periaxin. And then this is the message trees. So uh, after the uh, after putting the uh, fluorescent fatty acid, uh, this is the absorption of the fatty acid at the uh, single bilay. And then this is the transport of this fatty acid through the uh, mesenteric lymphatic vessels. And this is the liver imaging. So uh, we put the mouse on the back like this, and they make an incision on the skin, peritoneum, expose the liver, and place this uh, glass holder. And then we can see the liver like this. So again, this is a real time video with uh, 30 frames per second, imaging, imaging speed of 30 frames per second. And that's fast enough to, to see the uh, flowing nanoparticle in the liver after the uh, intravenous injection of this lead color nanoparticle. And then we can also, and then those are skin point chamber, cranial imaging window technique, and the abdominal imaging window. All this imaging window technique has been published in all the different uh, uh, papers, but the, we in, we just you know imported this uh, technique for our microscope, and then we make her you know additional holder, and then uh, window system to uh, to implement this imaging window capability. So this is the uh, you know, surgical procedure. This is our, one of our video omitted on the YouTube to show the, uh, to briefly sh show you the procedure of the dosa scaffolding chamber. So like this, so you expose the subcutaneous tissue and then uh, build up and then inject the cancer cell. And then, well, this is the uh, real data. So uh, I already explained it. And then this uh, nanoparticle delivery was monitored using this social skin point chamber like this. And then, well, this imaging can be you know, repeated in the same mouse model with even longer, even you know, longer you know, time interval, like three days, like day seven, day 10, day 13. We can find out the you know, same vessel you know, repeatedly by using this social skin point chamber. And then this is the surgical procedure for the cranial imaging window. So we expose the cranial skull and then remove the, some small portion of the skull and place a transplant uh, and, then tra and then put the transparent cover glass and then use UV epoxy to, you know, build up the exposed, skin, uh, exposed the skull and then do the imaging. And then this cranial imaging a window is a you know, very useful technique to image the brain for a very long period of time, like uh, 30 days, or even we can extend it to several months actually. So we can uh, we can find the exactly same cell again and again after this uh, cranial imaging window surgery. So all this is the all same cell imaged at different time point from day zero to day 30. And then, well, this is the one of the data we published in Galia uh, this year, actually. We induced the photothrombosis in the one single penetrating arterial uh, in the meninges of the brain, like this. And then well, we can monitor the change of the astrocyte, pericyte, and endocellular cell up to 30 days. And then we can see the you know, change of the uh, tissue areas like this, increased, so basically it's edema and then you know, atrophy of the brain tissues. And then we can also monitor the uh, leakage uh, of the uh, processed extran 
like uh, day zero, three, and day five. It's the same site. And this red color actually is showing the, you know, leakage of this processed extract with the molecular weight of three kilodalton. So basically what you are looking at here is the transient BBB dysfunction at day three. And it's a spontaneous recovery at day five. So, you know, if you look at this vessel, you can, you can easily see this the same, you know, site, same place, same location in the brain. And then we can, you know, monitor the change of the BBB functions. And this is the uh, one day, you know, timeless imaging uh, showing the uh, recovery of a parasite, you know, best coverage at day 3.5 to day 4.5. So this is 24 hour uh, timeless data showing this uh, elongation of uh, parasite processes along the, this blue color, that's endocellular cell. And then, yeah, and this is a pancreas imaging window, uh, you know, surgically implanted on the uh, mouse model on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the left side. And then this is the, our, uh, well, this is a little bit older version, but this is the, our holding system for this pancreas imaging window. And then that's, a, uh, and then that's the preparation to obtain this repeated, you know, pancreatic uh, uh, tumor model imaging. And then, well, we can also image the pancreas, spleen, well, and then kidney, and so on, using this same, you know, imaging window, abdominal organ imaging window. And then uh, this is the procedure for the uh, long imaging. So we intubate the mouse, and they connect it into the ventilator, and then we do the surgical procedure to expose the uh, so that's, uh, long, and they use our uh, imaging device, long imaging window device, to image the lung. And place back, and then place it under the uh, our objective lens, and then we can obtain this long imaging. So uh, yeah, I already explained it. So this is the heart imaging data, and then well, this is our uh, another data showing the epicardial pet accumulation with high pet diet for eight weeks. So you can see this green, white color. That's the, actually the lipid accumulated in the uh, Epicardium of the heart. Okay, so I showed you, you know, uh, most of the example of various tissue and organs. So uh, if you ever, if you are interested in, please visit our website www.ivimtech.com. And then uh, in this website, you can you, know, you can find the uh, useful resources such as webinars. It's all omnoded here. And then you can also provide some pre customization option like a pre space system. And then also, you know, if necessary, we also provide a consulting and testing and planning service for your intervital imaging experiment. And then, uh, well, if necessary, you can ask us to do the intervital imaging and analysis experiment in our in house uh, animal facility and intravital imaging there. So well, this is you know, one exemplary uh, project we have done in our in-house uh, imaging facility, in our imaging and animal facility. Uh, so in this example, in this work, you know, uh, these people ask us to image the exosome at 10 minutes after the injection and also 30 minutes after the injection to monitor the delivery of this exosome to the target cell. So as you can see in this digital, 10 minutes after the exosome injection, you can see the attachment of this exosome to the surface of the cell, and then followed by the internalization of this red color exosome, only at 30 minutes after the injections. Okay, so uh, we, intravital uh, IBM technology, we provide the all-in-one intravital microscope system for dual mode compoport and two-photon imaging of various you know, uh, tissue and live tissue and organ in live mouse model. And then we also provide intravital imaging R&D service. And then uh, as I explained myself, I have been worked in this area for more than now it's 17 years. And then we, are, we have our own you know, specialist team uh, in our company with you know, 
very long expertise, long experience, more than 10 years uh, with the uh, advanced know-how of intermetal imaging. So uh, we can, you know, consult you to efficiently, you know, start your imaging, intermetal imaging experiment. And then we can also provide, you know, very high quality technical support to optimize the uh, intermetal imaging experiment. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much for your attention for quite a long time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kim, for the interesting presentation. So I would like to open the floor for questions. Please enter your questions at the Q&A dialog box. I think for uh, those of you who don't know, we recently installed a dual model confocal and two photon system at the University of Southern California, where Dr. Hamal Juarez uh, is on the call right now uh, and her collaborator. Um, so um, for anyone who is interested to try the system or see it uh, in action, please uh, let us know and we can arrange a visit and a test for you. Um, so yeah, uh, seems like everything is clear. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have one uh, from Kathy. Uh, does this microscope need to be located in a vivarium? So uh, usually, like I can maybe take this question. Mm -hmm. It's it's ideal to place it in a vivarium uh, to just the uh, transportation of the animals from the facility to the microscope room should be easy. Uh, but even if it's not, uh, it should can, if it's in the same building or outside the building, it really uh, depends on, uh, let's say, situation of your institute. Um, but usually yeah, within the same building uh, would be ideal, but if not, uh, yeah, I think it can be handled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, sometimes in yeah, some institutes- yeah, dep they Depends on your situation, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we have uh, another question from Dr. Mm -hmm. Kuss. Uh, what type of detectors does the system have? Uh, we do yeah. two photon imaging through mm -hmm. thin bone and we find that we need to use uh, NDD detectors to capture enough signals. Yes, of course. For two photon imaging, we use NDD detectors. And then for compocal imaging, well, we use compocal detectors. So, you know, as, as I explained to you, so our dual mode, you know, my compocal and two photon microscope has a two types of detectors. For two photon imaging, we have two photon uh, NDD detectors. And for compocal imaging, we have uh, compocal detectors inside. For each imaging mode, we, we have eight, uh, four detectors each. So total eight detectors. Yes, yeah, so in this model uh, that we installed uh, at USC, we have uh, five lasers, one, two photon and four confocal lasers installed mm -hmm. in the system uh, for uh, all um, simultaneously for channel imaging at different depths. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. So I think I believe uh, more questions. We have two more minutes for questions. <laughs> okay, so well, any question pops up in your mind, just to send us email later. Yes, oh, you just okay. be in can... contact with us. Another question, can we use uh, for more than uh, eight uh, 30 nanometer emission wavelengths? Uh, okay, so uh, you know, may, you may know that the, for two photon imaging, for this 830 nanometer emissions, Ah, okay. So uh, with the two photon imaging system, we, we, you know, it's difficult to do this 830 nanometer emission wave uh, imaging. But uh, with the compact core system, uh, so currently our system has uh, four wavelengths laser, compact core laser, it's 405, uh, 488, and 561 and 640. 
but the, you know, we can change uh, one of the, our laser to 785 nanometer. And then using that lasers, you know, you can do this 830 nanometer emission uh, imaging. So in the, so actually one of uh, my publication about those, you know, neo-infrared dye imaging, uh, like ICG, Indocyan in green, and uh, quantum dot at 800 nanometer. But for that cases, we use uh, 785 nanometer lasers. But it's a compact mm -hmm. system. So yes, usually just to add to Dr. Kim's response, there is a difference in choices of dyes between two photon and mm -hmm. cofocal. Ah, yeah. uh, basically, that relates to the modality itself, uh, not the system. So mm -hmm. uh, there are some common dyes that both modalities can image. Uh, for a two photon system, you get uh, more depth of imaging, um, and for confocal, you get wider choice of dyes that you can image. Um, but the, for the most of the life sciences mm -hmm. that you can image with uh, both modalities. Uh, yes, actually, well, I, I don't know whether you can see my cursor here, but this particular yes. publication was about those 830 nanometer uh, emission wavelength imaging. It was okay. five years ago. So if you're yes. interested, in, I can send you this uh, particular publications. Sure, we can share. Uh some material with all the attendees uh, so we can check any tissue or organ of interest. Okay. Uh, so uh, seems like we addressed all questions. Dr. Alvarez, mm -hmm. you have any questions? <laughs> Very no, um, I'm just uh, marveling at the beauty of some of these images. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I always like to look at these images myself all the Actually, time. I do have one micro question, um, which mm -hmm. is related to the imaging that you did in the liver with mm -hmm. the lipid droplets. How did you uh, label the lipid droplets? Do you remember? Uh, yes. Of course, yeah. <laughs> for, <laughs> yeah, for the repeated droplet imaging, we use uh, uh, some pre noble presence agent, SF44. So that's a presence agent that can be intravenously injected only at, you know, several minutes before the imaging. So it was a very nice, you know, presence form. So we just do the simple intravenous injection of that. SF44, and it nicely label all the lipid droplet in the liver. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, Dr. Kim, I have also one question. What objective okay. was used to look at nanoparticles? Uh, is it 25X or 60X? Uh, that was 40X, actually. 40, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Awesome. So, uh, yeah, please feel free to let us know if you want to try the system mm -hmm. at Zilka Neurogenetic Institute, and we can arrange that. Um, and also, if there is any specific study we you, know, you need us to do a proof of concept for you uh, in South Korea, we can also mm -hmm. do that and send you with the example of your images and results. That's something we do. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending and for your time. Uh, any questions, please reach out to us, info at Cintica.com, and we will get back to you. Thank you. For Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for attending the seminar, uh, the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great time.